All right, so if you take a look at your graphs of polynomial functions packet, um, you can just follow along and keep notes with this video. All right, so let's take a look at number one. It says the graph of y equals f of x is shown below. Which set lists all the real roots of f of x equals zero? All right, so if you take a look on the top of the page, it says that roots, and I'm just going to add here, as well as zeros, and solutions, right, they all mean the same thing, are the x values at which the function crosses or touches the x-axis. All right, so if we look at our graph here, we can see the function crosses the x-axis here at x equals negative 2, so that's going to be one of our roots. It touches the x-axis right here at x equals 0, so that's going to be another root, and it also crosses through the x-axis right here at x equals positive 3, so that's going to be Another root. Now, if you look at the uh, way they, you know, the answer choices are, what they do is they take the solutions and they put them in curly brackets. And keep in mind, they separate them by commas and they put them in ascending order, so from least to greatest. And that would be our answer, which it looks like is choice four. Okay, so now if you turn the page and take a look at number five. Number five, this time they don't give us a picture. They say, what are the zeros? of the polynomial function and they give us the equation. So what we're going to do is if we're going to do this graphically, we're going to have to take out our calculator and let's graph this. So let me just set up a set of axes here. And if you go to y equals in your calculator and you graph this function, what we'll see is, let me just graph this out. I'm not even concerned about the y values. I'm really just looking at where the graph crosses the x-axis. So what we'll see is we have a function that crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 4, x equals negative 1, and at x equals 3. Okay, our function looks something like this. Okay, so our zeros would be x equals negative 4, x equals negative 1, and x equals 3. All right, now in part B, they want to know what are the factors of this function. Well, so the factors are going to have the opposite sign of your zeros here. So if x equals negative 4, that means we're going to have a factor of x plus 4. If x equals negative 1, that means we're going to have a factor of x plus 1. And again, if x equals positive 3, we're going to have a factor of x minus 3. So these right here are the factors of our function. If you were to, you know, double distribute, combine your like terms, and then distribute this to the x minus 3, and combine your like terms again, you would wind up with this function right here. So these are our factors, and these are our zeros. Okay, so if you flip the page once more to number eight, it says the graph of f of x is shown below. What are the zeros, part, letter A, what are the zeros at f of x? So the zeros are at, oop, <laughs> that was a little sloppy, but x equals negative 1, x equals positive 2, and right here at x equals positive 3. Okay, and if you prefer to write them with the curly brackets separated by commas, um, that's fine. Just write them in ascending order from least to greatest. All right, part B says, what are the factors? So, all right, let's take a look at this first zero. X equals negative 1. So the factor is going to have the opposite sign. It's going to have, it's going to say X plus 1. So in a parenthesis, I'm just going to write X plus 1. All right, the factor that goes along with zero, uh, with the zero of X equals positive 2 would be X minus 2. And the factor that goes along with the 0 of x equals positive 3 would be x minus 3. And remember, they just have the opposite signs. Now, letter C says, given that the leading coefficient equals 1, write an equation of f of x. Okay, so f of x would be equal to, now the leading coefficient is just really the number in front of your function. That's why it's called the leading coefficient. It's your leading number, your first number. So I'm going to put a 1 here. And then, I mean, basically these factors right here make up our function. So I'm just going to write that out as x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. 
and that right there is our function of f of x. Now, if they said the leading coefficient was 4, then instead of putting a 1 here, we would put a 4. Okay, and then finally, letter D, what is the degree of the function? Well, you know, um, for Algebra 2, this is how I'm going to tell you to do it. You'll see as you progress in math classes, it's a little bit more in-depth than this, but um, you really, if you want to figure out the degree, the degree just means, like, what is the biggest exponent on our function. So if the biggest exponent was like x squared, then that would be a second degree function. If it was an x cubed, that would be a third degree function. So in order to tell the degree of the function, you really just look at how many directions the function is going, in how many directions it's going. So it's going up, there's one direction, then down, there's another direction, and then up again, that's a third direction. So this is going to be a third degree function. And I just want to point out, um, you know, when you move on to like pre-calc and stuff, you'll see that that's not, you know, technically the way you're always going to tell because there's some exceptions to that. But for Algebra 2, that's um, kind of the starting point of what we're going to do at this point. All right, and the last one we're going to take a look at together is number 10. All right, so this should go a little faster. What are the zeros? So we know the zeros are right here at negative 4, positive 1, and positive 3. So I'm going to put them in the curly brackets this time. We have negative 4, positive 1, and positive 3. Okay, what are the factors? So the factors are going to have the opposite sign in the parentheses as what we see here. So the factor that goes along with x equals negative 4 would be x plus 4. The factor that goes along with positive 1 would be x minus 1. And the factor that goes along with positive 3 would be x minus 3. Okay, so if we want to, in letter C, write an equation for f of x, again they give us the leading coefficient is 1, so let's put a 1 here. And then let's just bring down our factors. So it would be 1 times x plus 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. And this right here, this is the factored form of the equation. If they ever asked you to write it in standard form, you would have to multiply this all out. But we're not going to get into that right now. Okay, now letter D says, what is the degree of the function of f of x? So if we look at how many directions it has, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Down, up, down, up. So the degree would be fourth degree. Now wait, hold on a second. If we go back to part C, x times x times x would be x cubed, not x to the fourth. So that must mean I must have made a little mistake right here. All right, let's just go back and talk about why. Now, wherever the graph just crosses through the x-axis like this, so at x equals negative 4, and at x equals 3. See how it's crossing through the x-axis? We say that has multiplicity of 1. But if the, which means, you know, there's just one of these roots. If the graph bounces off the x-axis like this, okay, it doesn't go through it. It comes up to the x-axis and then bounces off. Then what happens is we say this is a root that has multiplicity of 2. Okay, so when we go to write our equation, let me just write this out, okay, here, and please put this in your notes, at x equals 1, let me just make a little space here, at x equals 1, f of x, I'm going to say is tangent, you remember, may remember that term from geometry, to the x axis, which means it doesn't actually go through it, it just touches it, okay, so it, I'm just going to say, it just touches the x-axis, and then it bounces right back off of it. Um, so I'm going to just say, therefore, this is the little symbol that means therefore, it's like three little dots that make a triangle. So, therefore, f of x has multiplicity of 
of 2 at x equals 1. Okay, so now to go back to the letter C, since there's multiplicity of 2 at x equals 1, on this factor of x minus 1, we are going to need to put a little square on that. Okay? That means that there's two of them. So when I go up, back up to letter B, what are the factors of f of x? Let's also put a little square on that. So just to kind of sum it up, whenever your graph bounces off the x-axis like this, okay, you're only going to write that root once, but for the factors, and when you go to write your equation, you need to put that square there because it has multiplicity of 2.